episode of the podcast sponsored by Walmart.
All right. Moment of truth. Look. Look. Where do you think that came from, jackasses? It came from my head. Proof. Oh. Who wants this for $10? Honestly, I expected that to last longer. <laughs> that was like a... That took her like five minutes. That's kind of embarrassing. Uh, pu uh pup gun. Instead of pop dog, the, the problem with pup gun is that, uh, is that the camera angle is a little too high up. Why is what declining you? Why can't you subscribe? Probably because your credit card needs to be changed. It's just not clearing hair in my head. You missed it. The haircut didn't last as long as I was expecting it to. It only took her like five minutes. Yeah, I mean, you thought Jub was the only one who can who can create amazing content. No, I can fake a haircut live on stream. <laughs> uh. How much did it cost? It was, uh, well, it didn't cost any money, but... It cost me a, uh, the rest of my life, I guess. That's a fair price to pay. for the people who followed specifically during the haircut section. I'm surprised that, uh, I wonder how long those people have been watching me in there. Like, I'm not following this guy. I'm just going to keep watching, but I'm not following. And then finally, when I get a haircut, it's like, whoa, this is it. Following. <clears throat> this is, uh, this is the moment I've been waiting for.
I'm gonna try something weird. Oh, yeah, I don't think I can do that, actually. I'll try that. Yeah, actually, this kind of works out. So I got my notes and my um, chat and everything on the same page, so it's going to look like I'm going to be re looking directly at chat while I'm reading off notes. That kind of works. Actually, I might like this a lot better than what I've been doing. And yeah, sorry to all those who joined, uh, who didn't join right as the stream started, uh, but I did get a haircut. I'm sure that... Probably a clip of it floating around somewhere at this point. I expected it to last longer than what it did. It took her like five minutes. Watch it for the hair content. <laughs> Haircut. Topic box. I've needed a haircut really bad too, is the thing. Specifically waited to do it just for you guys. <laughs> Makeup tutorial. Hey, I gotta I gotta adapt, man. The original format wasn't paying the bills. Blame society, not me. <laughs> I still, I still point out pick of names that suck. That's never gonna go away. That's something I always enjoy. Everyone bald at Riptide? No. 
No. Some of you... A lot of you look good with hair. Some of you don't, but... Oh, actually, for most of you, just looking good is not really something that's ever going to happen. So, I guess being bald won't make that much of a difference, unfortunately. It's a shame. Bald or hair, it makes little difference. <laughs> Are we ready? Can we start this now? I've only set myself up for bald jokes here. Yeah, we can start. and welcome back to the podcast. Whenever you're listening to this, whether it be live or a VOD, Twitch or YouTube, or Spotify, while you're calculating the math on the respawn punisher numbers, filling out a form to donate your dock setup for Riptide, Creating a fake high school football team of college kids and getting onto ESPN to play the best high school team in the country only to lose, i.e. smurfing in high school football, whatever it is that you're doing right now. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to this, uh, unless I don't. <laughs> um, news of some uh, tournaments that are going to be happening recently. Uh, or upcoming tournaments that are going to be happening that may interest you, the casual listener of the podcast, unless you're banned from some of these events. One of them, you're not. First off, uh, Little Squid League 15 is not going to be this Saturday, but the Saturday after that, September the 18th. Uh, this is a tournament for teams Div 6 and below, but if you put in an exemption request, it might get approved. It might not, who knows, but... Uh, Always a lot of teams been signing up for this tournament recently. If I'm just going to look quickly right now just to get a glimpse at how many teams are currently signed up for this. Click that. And uh, sign up. We're looking at number 15. And now I just popped up something on the right side. 21 teams already signed up for this. Look, Nightshade X. I said they were going to be uh, a team continuing to win. Ocean 7, second place team. Psychedelic Air Launchers making a return here. Good to see those guys back. And the Fire Flame, uh, Fire Flame Flame Backs, I believe they were a top cut team last time as well. So 21 teams are ready for this tournament. Um, and a couple of uh, heavy hitters signing up as well. <coughs> Again, call it now. Nightshade X will take one Ocean 7 for the... Uh, grand finals unless some other monster team kind of shows up that we haven't seen before um should be a good tournament make sure you sign up and play in it uh because it's a great opportunity to grow and improve as a player unless it's not uh super jump is going to take place the weekend after that as the major hosted by ipl i believe the current prize pool was announced to be uh 700 i know it started out as 500 and I believe we've got enough donations to where it's 700. It possibly be even higher than that right now, as far as I uh, as far as I know. But still, make sure you sign up for this. Uh, and, and if you don't sign up for it, don't worry. Nobody on Twitter is going to complain about low level teams not signing up for it. And if they do, well, show them pretty much every episode of the podcast I've ever done. That's kind of uh, taking shots at people who make those stupid comments. Um, Make sure you watch it. Make sure you support it. Uh, there's going to be some exciting teams playing in it. It's going to uh, it's going to be a fun time. The production value is going to be off the charts. The commentary is uh, going to be as good as it possibly can get. 
this is going to be a high quality production that you are going to be watching. So make sure you watch it if you don't play in it. Or don't do anything. Don't support it at all. I don't care. I do. Uh, today, we are going to be previewing Riptide, the first and maybe last LAN we are going to have for competitive Splatoon um, in a long time, D depending on how things go. But uh, regardless of the past or the future, we are in the present are going to be celebrating a LAN. And that is very exciting. We're going to be talking about every single stinking team that signed up for this event. All 38. We are going to be mentioning in some form or fashion. I did my research. I did. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time looking at people's Twitters. And to find information on everybody to be talking about. And uh, we're going to be covering that today. On the podcast. As well as uh, recapping the uh, the week. Everything that happened last week with uh, SOS. Uh, Dapple Productions had a couple of tournaments. And of course, uh, a press conference from uh, a Wiggly Phantoms that we're going to be breaking down as well. But first. Another good topic spawned on Twitter this past week. And it all started from a simple tweet about casters not knowing the alt names of every player that is on stream. And I, as a fellow commentator who will uh, commentate a lot of things, it is kind of annoying when you are commentating a set, particularly a grand final set, like the, uh, the top the, the top two teams in a tournament finally playing against each other. And me, the commentator, has absolutely no idea who they are. And the audience, half of them know who the players are and the other half have no clue because their name is completely changed to a uh, the baby or Sussy Baca or whatever trend is going on Twitter right now so that nobody knows who these players are. And then when I just read the name of the player playing in grand finals... All of a sudden, everyone is chat. how could you not know who this is? Clearly, this person is like, what? No, like, I, I'm not, I'm not going to, to, first off, I don't know if you're telling me the truth or not. So I can't trust you, guy in chat, telling me who this smiley face person is. But second off, if they wanted me to be read their name, what their actual name is, they would have made their IGN that and made it so much more simpler for people to understand who they were. This kind of, uh, this didn't, now Dura made a twit longer uh, and said that this wasn't directly related to the topic of people not having uh, consistent IGNs when they play in tournaments and things like that and leading to some confusion about things. But it it, it kind of spawned at the same exact time as uh, as that conversation was going on on Twitter. It, but Dura kind of highlighted some other things and I, I'm not going to post like the twit longer so you can look at it yourself. Um, but if you just go to Dura uh, Twitter account, which I don't have that handle ready either, um, you can look at it yourself. But basically, the the um, it now Dura has been calling out people for doing a TLDR. I mean, you clearly didn't read all the way through this document. Um, but to give a TLDR, basically. Uh, the topic that was kind of discussed was more of an expansion on some of the current issues that have been preventing the scene from growing, highlighting people not taking bands seriously, not understanding the importance of spectators, and top teams being way too good for everybody else, uh, which is going to be on display this weekend. If I were to break down each one of those points one at a time, I will start right off the bat with that top teams being a little bit too good for everybody else. That is something we've been talking about a couple of times here on the podcast. Right now, it is FT win or not FT win and Starburst, and that's it. I mean, there nobody can really touch those two teams. Maybe somebody can take a game off of them. Maybe somebody can threaten to beat like back pink in a bracket reset, only to lose to them in the bracket reset. But for right now, it is those two teams that will dominate, and they only sign up for tournaments that have prize pools because, of course, there's no value in the team that's already at the top of the mountain winning SOS. Uh, but they would play in it when there was a $100 prize pool. But now that there's not, they, they don't show up. But they will show up for some random tournament. I pointed this out. There was like a, 
uh, some like birthday party t- celebration tournament that had like a, a like a hundred or two hundred dollar prize pool. Only like ten teams or so signed up for it. Not a lot of people knew about it. Who was one of those ten teams? It was Back Pink, some combination of FT Win and Starburst that just rolled that tournament. Said, "I'll take that money from you. Thank you for offering it to us." Um, and that, so we only see these top teams play in specific events that only have. Uh, major prize pools in it or significant money that the that Starburst or FT Win can just basically take, say thank you. Now, we've never seen FT Win and Starburst actually play against each other recently, and that kind of sucks because if one of them plays in a tournament and the other doesn't, they're just going to steamroll their way all the way through it and just collect the prize at the end, and it leads to a grand finals that is a curb stomp. This upcoming weekend Riptide uh, is going to be the first time, at least in my mind, that those two teams are actually going to be playing against each other. And they are going to be playing against each other in winners' finals and grand finals. That is a 100% popcast prediction guarantee. There is no team that is going to beat them heading up to those two spots <laughs> in, in uh, on Sunday. Uh, but because we don't see that, and because we know they're the top teams and they don't play against each other hardly ever, it does kind of lead to a little bit of uh, unsatisfying into a lot of these tournaments that we're seeing. So I understand that. Uh, but the community is not just the top teams. It is everybody from the uh, the people that are playing in launch point to Chuck point one to the people that are trying to rub elbows with the right person to get into plus three. Now, I love twit longers like this because it sparks conversation and spark and conversation sparks new ideas, which is the stage that competitive Splatoon needs to be in right now as we're waiting for Splatoon 3 to come out. We need to be building the new infrastructure right now so that when Splatoon 3 comes out, we're rocking and ready to go and ready to just take off with all those new people that we're expecting to join the scene when Splatoon 3 comes out. Instead of just hoping... I'm just going to come back when Splatoon 3 comes out. I'll see you guys later. Like, okay, what do you expect to be here? What do you expect to change in your absence? If nobody does any, if everybody just waits for Splatoon 3 to come out, are we waiting for casuals? The casuals that we're constantly chasing away by laughing at them for complaining about being squid bagged. Like those are the people you were hoping will come in Splatoon 3 and save the scene. No, we need to save the scene now in conversation in Twitlongers. Uh, like Dura released are a good way to help spark conversations, which helps get ideas uh, fleshed out and we can make things better. So that's why I like it when, when Dura makes a twit longer, or I believe revenge made a twit longer uh, earlier this month, talking about that, like Splatoon people were calling a Splatoon bank uh, revenge wasn't, um, but that sparked a new conversation and something that we'll get into a little bit later. Uh, now, the IGN thing that a lot of people were kind of talking about, I kind of mentioned it a little bit, the frustrations of being a commentator, having to deal with uh, people's IGNs not being remotely close to who they actually are. And uh, why do people do this? There's a lot of reasons, and I, I don't want to speculate on every single one of them, but there is a little bit of a sense of... If I lose to someone who I know I'm not supposed to lose to, I know it's going to be blasted on Twitter and I'm going to lose a little bit of credibility. Uh, Case in point, pretty much every single time Azure lost in a uh, testing grounds, it wasn't the final testing grounds, it was one of the last testing grounds. They lost twice. Every time they lost, all four players on the team that beat him went to Twitter and just had an absolute blast of a party about it. So about eight different people tweeted out, yo, we just beat Azure, let's go. And that's understandable that you should be excited when you beat somebody that's better than you. But if you were Azure, you're probably looking at Twitter and seeing everybody celebrating that you lost, being like, man, this sucks. Now, a lot of the times... You'll have uh, you'll have a team that will play 
and it's three players of that original team, and they'll have like one sub. What do they do? They completely change their name. Oh, we're no longer uh, we're no longer Arctic Moon for this tournament. We're Arctic Spoon or something. So if you beat us, no, no, you didn't beat Arctic Moon. You beat Arctic Spoon because we were missing one player or something like that. It's it's like the uh, it's like the whole uh, that uh, that Pokemon animation by Ego Raptor, where Brock and uh, Ash are playing against each other, and Ash beats Brock because, or, or Brock gives up because Ash like fixes his refrigerator or something like that, and he's like, "Here you go, here's the badge uh, that that proves your your worthfulness or something," and he puts the badge on his chest, and he's like, "This proves that I beat you." And Brock's like, "No, no, 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 you didn't, you didn't beat me. I I'm just acknowledging something, you know, like don't go around." saying you beat me because you didn't kind of thing and that's that I, that's the sense i get when somebody like changes their team name for one tournament or like changes their actual ign so it's like no no you didn't beat me you beat you beat the baby you know or, or something like that and there's of course there's several other reasons why people change their names me personally i will sometimes change my name when i'm going through solo queue because it is kind of annoying every now and then when somebody ggs me after a match um <laughs> or when they realize i'm on their same team but will do a little like five second squid party around me which is annoying because i'm usually using a splat link and they're usually blocking my shots so sometimes i might change my name to something else not because i'm some sort of celebrity but just to cut down on the number of people that are annoying in solo queue because they recognize who you are so i understand the need to, i understand why people change their names for for things like solo queue and for tournaments it does kind of come down to a little bit of a, a little bit of credibility here. If you don't feel like you might be playing at your best, you might change your name so that nobody can go on Twitter and kind of call you out for beating you for something that might for for excuses that may exist or may not. I'm not saying that's the main reason why people change their name for tournaments, but we see it happen so often and I know for a fact, I know for a fact that some teams do not want to be recognized for being defeated and will dodge certain situations because they they fear losing more than the actual uh thrill of, of victory and and i get that you know my me personally i hate losing more than i like winning and i'm sure a lot of competitive people share that mindset but when you get the higher up the food chain you go the more losses you take the more hype other people are getting, and you can take it as like, oh, this is a good thing that, that people see me as a quality team to beat against, uh, to beat. Or you can see it as, wow, this kind of sucks. Now everybody's excited that I lost or something like that. Uh, you know, it's uh, it, it is what it is. And other people make alt account. It's not just Splatoon that makes alt account. There are alt accounts for for all kinds of different sports. StarCraft is an eSport I pay a lot of attention to. <laughs> Those players have tons. Like, ton players at, at the top of StarCraft have, like, 20 or 30 different alt accounts. I might be exaggerating a little bit, but they have tons of different names that they go by just so people don't instant recognize them um, if they were to play bad. But this does hurt branding. Especially in tournaments. Uh, the spectator for the event, if people will comment and the, the people who will comment and subscribe and like and subscribe and donate and, and all that stuff, they are not going to care if they have no idea who is playing on stream. This is why Low Inc. is so dominant in the scene right now. Mainly because we force people to use their actual IGNs. And the reason we do that is not because of branding issues. We do it because we need to verify who you are. If you're on stream and your IGN doesn't match exactly, we will tell you, like, hey, you need to fix this. We'll usually wait till, like, after the set because we don't want to slow down the entire tournament for you to redo everything. But if you if it's not 100% matching on stream and you and we catch it, and when you break that rule again, you will start losing games. We have taken games away from people before because they didn't change their name after a warned for whatever reason. It's beyond ridiculous. But Low Ink, you know when you watch a Low Ink stream who is actually playing in those tournaments, who the players are, who the teams are. And there's been times... Um, in in where I've been commentating the SOS or a testing ground or something like that, and... 
I, I pay attention to this scene. You guys know that. Now, I have no clue who those people are. There is a reason why three times as many people will watch round one of Low Ink Swiss. Two teams who we will put on that we have no idea if they're even going to make Gamma Bracket or not, to be honest with you. But 120-ish people will watch that match as opposed to the 30 or 40 or 50 or so that will watch a grand finals of some other event. Three times as many people will watch that. Why? It's not because of skill level, right? Because a team playing in the grand finals of Squid Junction is infinitely stronger than a team that's going to be on round one of Swiss of Low Ink. So why are more people going to be watching Low Ink than something that's got a higher... Uh, skill level like squid junction it's because branding you guys know what you're going to get out of a low ink stream you know the production value is going to be insane you know that ink fair is going to dominate the uh the spectator cam it's not going to be auto cam it's going to go right to where the action is going to be you know the overlays are going to be awesome you know the commentators are going to know who they're actually talking about and you are going to know who the teams actually are that makes a difference. That level of consistency makes a difference. The team that won Squid Junction 9 was called Plus 2 uh, General VC. What? The, the, the casual fan has no idea who that is, and they're not going to care. But when you watch Low Ink, and there's a reason. I have commentated the last 16 grand finals in a row at Low Ink. There's a reason for that. It's consistency. And I do a good job, not humble brag, but I do a good job of bringing the audience in and letting them understand why they should care. Because the audience might not know every single team that's playing in a tournament, but I do. And when I'm talking about them in, in the later stage of the tournament, it helps bring in the audience so that they understand why they should be invested in what they're watching versus, oh, you're telling me these two teams are plus two players that's awesome i don't know who any of these guys are because their ign's never match ever so I, I don't even know what their twitter where to begin looking for their twitters or anything like that uh but when low ink the best example i can think of uh february of this month the crusty crew made it to the f uh finished in fourth place in that tournament so they were on loser semifinals when i was commentating them and uh i knew who they were the, the audience might not have, but I was able to kind of paint the picture of like, here's who the Krusty Crew is. Here's what their previous low ink results are. Here's how significant, it, it's very significant that they're playing at this stage of the tournament. And that's why you should be interested in that. And after I kind of explain who these guys are, all of a sudden, the audience is now more interested and they're more invested and they're going to actually pay attention and they, and they understand what the storyline here, they understand what's at stake versus just being like, oh, well, here's two teams that are going to win a tournament that, okay, cool. Congratulations, those two teams. It, it, it's a whole nother level when you actually know what is going on here. And that's not really any tournament's fault. I mean, we, like I said, we kind of cheat the system a little bit. We force you to have the same IGN, not because <clears throat> of branding, but because we need to know who you are. Uh, it's a skill cap tournament, but it, other tournaments don't do that. And because of that, who knows who's playing and whatever. And again, it's open invite. So you don't need to, you don't need to spend time verifying every single player that signs up. That's a lot of tedious work for no real payoff. Um, but until players start recognizing that their brand is important, then yeah, you're going to get more tournaments that have grand finals where only 30 people are watching and they're not really going to care or know who's playing in it or what's going on. But I love having conversations like this because they're driving things forward. Like the revenge document, uh, talking about the Splatoon nonprofit organization that would disperse money to attorneys. That was a bad idea, but it got conversations started and it got me talking openly on the podcast about how we need more organizations like IPL that can fund themselves and grow themselves. Why do we have Super Jump here at IPL? It's because we've been streaming long enough to get enough subscriptions and donations and some small, I, I guess it's not significant yet, but once we become partnered, it'll help out a little bit more. But basically the Twitch channel of IPL got the fundraising for Super Jump uh, being self, uh, be, 
the fundraiser super jump main came mainly from all of the streams that we had on IPL built up from that point, obviously some other donations along the way, but because we've been consistent with our tournaments, it helps getting those kinds of donations. If we want to see more majors like that, you need more organizations that people are going to actually contribute to. Now me kind of talking about this has sparked this imperialism movement that we're kind of seeing that where attorneys are starting to band together uh, to save each other and actually support each other instead of working independently and having these Twitch channels that stream once a month that aren't benefiting themselves or anybody else. Uh, and I'm not going to leak anything. Obviously, Dapple Productions has been making some money moves lately. But I know for a fact they are not the only one. And I'm not just hinting at IPL here. The landscape, the landscape of competitive Splatoon tourney scene is going to be changing for the better soon. And this is a good thing. We really need this right now because high level, as we've been talking about on a couple episodes of the podcast, has been a total mess right now. Yes, uh, but I have been beating the drum for a while now about this. There is a new generation of players that grew up in an actual low level with launch point and midpoint and low ink that pay it forward, that are making hilarious and wholesome memes on Twitter, that are reinvesting in tourneys and getting uh, tourneys that they are banned from for being too good. Uh, they're coming back and helping those tourneys grow even more, that are donating the super jump, and they are ready to take the next step and pushing out all these older comp players that have been sitting at the top for a long time that grew up in a low level where your, the low level was basically you won one game in BNS. That was it. There was no little squid league. There was no pickup servers like launch point or checkpoint. There was no, there was low ink and teams called team E were the ones winning low ink back in that, in those days. So there was no low level for those guys, but we've have a new generation that grew up in an actual environment where they got to meet other people around them and grow with those same people that are ready to take that next step and push out all these elitists at the top that think everybody that is below the plus server level that they're at is not worth their time or attention. Those days are starting to change and we're starting to see new blood climb their way up the pyramid and are starting to change things for the better. Now, there is a slight hiccup right now because as we've been talking about, there is a lack of mid-level stuff going on in the scene right now, i.e. things like Midway and SAC. Well, SAC just posted the eye emoji. If there's ever been a time for mid-level to come out and flex the future of the scene, it's now. So SAC, we see you with your eye emoji. The question is, what are you looking at? Regardless, the scene, people at the top are constantly complaining about where the scene is and how it's dying and crumbling. You're not paying attention to what's going on outside of high level. Low level has been a nonstop party for the past couple of years, and it's starting to bleed over into mid level. It's eventually going to bleed over into high level. And this scene is going to be great in the future because the people that are actually investing in trying to make everything better are the people that are not at the top right now. <laughs> The elitist at the top, I should say. With that being said, let's look at some of the tournaments that have been going on this past weekend. Some of the things that have been happening that may be of interest to you. The casual listener to the podcast who actually cares about this scene going forward. It's time for the... Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> Weekly recap. Oh, that's not it. There we go. The Wiggly Phantoms held a press conference last week uh, that was broadcasted on C Splat, apologizing for spreading false rumors about Low Ink um, being canceled. Uh, they also announced that they are going to be participating in Super Jump and encourage other teams to do the same. There's been no word for no response from IPL just yet. Uh, whether they have forgiven the Wiggly Phantoms, if there's going to be any sort of punishment coming from this, uh, from this, but um, 
I, 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 not speaking on IPL's behalf, just for myself, I appreciate the Wiggly Phantoms coming out and uh, publicly apologizing for this crime they committed against the community. But, uh, I mean, nobody really likes the Wiggly Phantoms. Um, they're one of those jerk teams that everybody kind of, like, despises. So, I don't think anybody's really going to forgive them, but only time will tell. SOS 40 happened this past Wednesday. No stream for this one because of the, uh... Uh, boycott of IPL or not IPL stream, the boycott of Twitch streams altogether due to hate raid things. Um, however, this would have been a fun tournament to see because Summit beat Los Panas 4-3 to three in Grand Finals of the Great White Bracket. This is a good win for this team. I saw this coming. It was just a matter of time. Summit was flirting with the idea of winning SOS's and testing grounds. Um, and they finally did it. And it's not like they dodged anybody either. They straight up beat Pickup. Yes. We're, we just talk about branding being an issue. There's been a team dominating SOS for like the entire past couple of months. And their name is just Pickup. Well, that same Pickup that's been dominating SOS lost to Summit 3-2. to two. So Summit beat some of the best teams in this tournament. Didn't dodge anybody and ended up winning it all. Uh, so a solid tournament win for them looking down into the uh, Mako uh, hammerhead bracket the team that won that was two Americans plus two Canadians they beat Mocha uh, to win hammerhead uh, cookies surprise recipe <laughs> beat deep fried up <laughs> excuse me the deep fried octolings for Mako bracket and oh gosh you guys know this one and I don't his Suian Ralph uh, beat the GooTuber Daydream for Lantern. I'm assuming that's something with the uh, new Pokemon Direct that came out recently. Paddling Pool, 127. Uh, first place went to Spider-Man in the Ottoman Empire Stand Club. I think we're starting to see a trend here as why nobody cares about who wins these tournaments because these names make absolutely no sense as to who's actually won it. Uh, second place was The Root, and third place was... W key. Okay, did, did anything I just said right there make any sense to anybody who's listening? I could have I could have just said something complete. I could have just made up team names. I could have just been like the the Popcat haircut team one piling pool 127. You would have believed me cuz this names make no sense. I know W key because Z uh, from Destiny Troops was on it. Um, so I know who the other players are that are, but I don't know who the root is or Spider-Man in the Ottoman Empire Stand Club is. Congratulations to that team that won it. Okay. Uh, 19 teams played in, in the 127 edition of this EU Weekly. Um, Snapshot was the Dapple Productions tournament. Day two, uh, a two-day tournament that happened this past weekend that saw Arctic Moon taking home the gold medal, the gold medal over Tachi Bana. Uh, this was promoted as uh, Dapple's major. I don't know what kind of qualifies as a major um, for competitive Splatoon. Um, I don't think you can just make a two-day tournament and say it's a major. If that's the case, then Low Link, Low Link is a monthly major, and I don't want to think of it as that. Uh, but it was still a, a big tournament, one-off tournament, at least for Dapple Productions that could kind of grow. Maybe Snapshot 2 will have a large prize pool that will entice more teams to sign up for it. But it did have multiple brackets to its credit. Uh, very similar to Low Link. had an Alpha, uh, Beta, and Gamma bracket. Um, so looking at the, uh, team that won beta bracket, this was, uh, Scrow Gnu Gnu beat Splatter Swim to win beta bracket. Wait, whoa, wait, wait a minute. Who'd they beat? Splatter Swim? What? The team disbanded 10 months ago. What, what are they doing in this tournament? Okay, cool. So Splatter Swim took second place in beta bracket. Uh, Ink Sync won Gamma Bracket over <laughs> Rate My Professor. Overall, 35 teams played in this one. Also, Splutter Swim wasn't the only team playing in this tournament. Pure Divinity and Krill or, or License to Krill uh, played in this tournament as well. So that's three teams that disbanded that came back to play in Dapple Productions tournament. Uh, so a lot of ghosts haunted this tourney for... Uh, 
for whatever reason, good to see all these teams kind of come out and participate in this, uh, in that event for whatever reasons they felt obligated to do so. License for Krill, I, that one makes more sense because they're going to be playing in Riptide, so they might have just saw this tournament as, like, a good way to kind of warm up, uh, with each other for Riptide. Um, good to see Pure Divinity Splatter Swim back, um, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about that. Good to see teams come back from the dead, but congratulations to Arctic Moon for winning the whole thing. And that was the weekly recap sponsored by Friday Night Frenzy, uh, a tournament series hosted by Falco Flyer. I didn't cover the Friday Night Frenzy in the weekly, refra uh, weekly recap uh, because you should check it out yourself. Uh, the Wiggly Phantoms are playing in it, and that means, I think that's one of the main reasons a lot of people actually know what this is, because the Wiggly Phantoms are one of the most popular teams uh, in North America right now. Do you know, the Wiggly Phantoms have more Twitter followers on their team account than Starburst? Let that sink in. That's how popular the Wiggly Phantoms are. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Because I see some people in chat that I don't normally see here for the podcast, which is fine. We're, we're excited to have you here. It's, it's always nice to have uh, people come in. I, I understand there's like different, different, some people watch some episodes, some will, will only watch for certain ones. It's nice to see all of you guys here uh, appreciating and supporting competitive scene. Uh, either, any way that you see fit and maybe just enjoying your Labor Day I'm like oh there's nothing else. I don't have school might as well listen to bald man talk about video games some more let's move right along to talking about every single team uh, if I got this correctly yes okay so this uh, well my chat blocks um, a couple of these groups here and I don't know how I, I can't really like adjust this up any kind of way, but who cares? Uh, teams in G1 and G2, nobody cares about those guys. Anyway, so screw them. Regardless, every single team you see up here, except for one, I am going to be talking about right now, previewing Riptide from this upcoming weekend. Uh, quick disclaimer. <clears throat> Rosters may not be 100% accurate. I might read off a player that is on paper going to play in this event who isn't actually going to, or there's been some tweet that be like, we replace this player with this player. Uh, my information uh, might not be a hundred percent accurate. I, so if I say anything like that, take it with a little bit of grain of salt, uh, that I might be missing something, but regardless, I'm going to be, I feel like I'm going to be as accurate as possible. As some of these rosters. So let's get right into it. We're going to be going to uh, we're going to be going right down the list here from D one. First, why why are these like D E and G? Like what happened to A B C and like F? Why I I don't know what's the uh, the lettering here kind of throws me off. Um, I, I don't really get the the context of that. Deg. Maybe that stands for something. I don't know. But we're going to go basically in order so that no, we're not going to be like, this is team number one down the team 38 or anything like that. So we're just going to go straight down as far as they appear, starting with uh, Climb, the team that I think a lot of people are going to be seeing as the one team that has the best potential, maybe outside of Arctic Moon, to threaten Starburst, Starburst or not FT win for that grand final spot. I, we saw it happen at Genesis, right? What, it was FT win and uh, what team was Zero on then? Was it Demise that was the name of that team? Um, they played in winner's finals and then uh, <clears throat> that other, t they didn't, it wasn't the same. It might have been Quantum, but I think it was Quantum because I think Demise was the team that sponsored them and then they lost that that sponsorship or whatever. And they were just quantum then. Um, and then, uh, but that team quantum after almost beating FT win in winners finals 
lost, went to losers finals, and then lost in losers finals. So it wasn't a direct repeat of grand finals and winner finals back at Genesis. Um, and I wonder if that's going to be the case here. If Starburst and FT win are going to play each other in winners finals and the loser just kind of trips up in losers finals to a team that's coming in uh, with a little bit more hype and energy behind them. Um, it could be climb. I, I mean, it climb is a strong team. Are they a top? Are they a bronze medal team here for sure? Can they beat Starburst FT win? I don't know. I, I don't think so. But as you're looking around here, like who could play spoiler? There's not a lot of teams that can play spoiler um, to that grand finals. We're all expecting it's either going to be Arctic moon or it's going to be climb. So uh, regardless, climb looking pretty strong right now um, and should be definitely on the podium. Should be definitely a top four team in this tournament, but not, not anything higher than top three for sure. Assault and Pnuckles. <laughs> Who is this team? Uh, this is basically, uh, it, it's half of A2P players because you see Assault and Pepper is showing up here in this next bracket. But Assault and Pnuckles uh, does have Dan and Pear on it. Uh, I don't know if Pear is still a part of A2P. I know Dan, uh, I think Dan still is. Uh, but there are two at least uh, players that represent A2P that are on this team. The other two players being Mori and Leo, who just won SOS 40 with Summit. Uh, maybe some of you in chat might know Leo more so from Xanadu. But Summit is uh, making a, a big name for themselves because of their branding is consistent. They're not changing their IGNs every single tournament. Uh, who's going to be better? Assault to Knuckles and Salt to Pepper? I don't know. Um, but I, my team personally has scrimmed both of these teams. It's a completely different style that both teams kind of bring out there. I feel like the roster for Assault and Knuckles on its own is pretty strong. But Assault to Pepper probably has more synergy being the actual team. Popcat Supremacy! This has got Luna, Kraken Mare, uh, Hick, Ami, and Kraft who are all strong players who do have experience playing in lands before. Some of these players did play in uh, Genesis 7, um, and that is going to bleed over here. Um, I Do I feel like they can threaten Assault to Pnuckles? Uh, just a full disclaimer, if this listing for each group is kind of the seeding. So like the top team you see here is the team that is projected to win first, second, third, and fourth in the group. Uh, can Popcast Supremacy threatened to beat Assault to Pnuckles. They got the roster to do it. Uh, I don't know how much these players have been playing recently. I know Kraken Mayor, I think, is kind of going into this one um, try, just to like kind of meet the, some other people and kind of enjoy the thing. That doesn't mean that Kraken Mayor doesn't have a competitive bone in the body. That, that dude is competitive, um, and you like to see it. Um, but this should be a good matchup between these two teams when they play against each other. But I give the edge to Assault and Pnuckles. Uh, just because those players are more uh, relevantly active uh, recently, as opposed to some of these players on Popcat Supremacy. Uh, but still should be a strong team in its own right. Casual Inc. I found some information about these guys, because you probably don't know who these guys are. But this is a, this is actually an interesting team, because I saw their Twitter, and they seem to be playing only in lands. They played in a Smash and Splash. They were going to play. They played in Smash and Splash 5. They were going to play in Smash and Splash 6 before it got canceled. Um, and they played a couple of weekends ago in 2D Con uh, that was in Minneapolis. So they these guys just play competitive Splatoon only for lands. I, I, at least that's what their Twitter portrays. They didn't show anything like they played in a, a Low Ink or, or a Ludi or anything like that. So Casual Ink. Um, cool. I'm ex honestly, I kind of want to meet these guys just because they seem like a cool group of guys, um, uh, that only play in, uh, Ed land. So that might be the most experienced team coming into this one. Honestly, good may in not good morning. This is kind of what I was talking about. It's, it's not Arctic moon. It's Arctic spoon. Well, this isn't good morning. So if you beat us, you can't say you beat good morning because we are good main. Um, this is soldiers, shadow wind and Lux. So no Omega or no keen are going to be on the roster for this one. Instead, they have, uh, my Karu, who's going to be subbing for them. Still a strong team in its own right. Um, a top eight team for sure. Definitely lock them in for top eight. I uh, don't know how much farther they're going to go past that though. Um, considering 
when Good Morning actually played in the last Squid Junction, they didn't, I think they finished in the top three, but didn't win the tournament. Um, so Good Main, don't know how they're going to be without Omega or Keen in the roster. Should still be a really strong team. Um, but I don't know. Top eight for sure. Not sure how much farther past top eight they can go, though. Assault and Pepper, the uh, the roster for this team that is actually the Assault and Pepper roster. Knee, Tim, Siren, and Soren. Uh, basically a Div 2 team that's been around since uh, since uh, the dawn of time uh, that I know. I, I know my team has been playing against the Salt and Pepper. I think the first time we played against them was like July of 2019. Um, so this is a super old team, and it's good to be seeing them playing at this LAN. Uh, again, them versus the Salt to Pinnacles. I, uh, strong rosters, but the edge has to go to the team that has actual synergy with each other as opposed to the, uh, the more hodgepodge picky-up team. Kingmaker, if you paid attention to Fry, uh, the Friday Night Frenzy uh, stream, these team, this team actually played the Wiggly Phantoms last Friday in a play all three set and beat them in uh, two to one. Kingmaker has Hammer on it, who uh, just missed getting into plus three recently. And this is a very gimmicky to end all gimmicky teams. What the comp they used against the Wiggly Phantoms on Friday was Triple Brush. They use two Octo Brushes, an Ink Brush, and a Kensa Junior. Super gimmicky. Yeah, now, sometimes you see a team that goes completely off script from the meta and can get some dubs here. And this is still a strong team. Kingmaker has been around. I believe their Twitter is from October of 2018. So they've been showing up like in a tournament here or there, playing in like every now and then. Um so these are competitive players and good ones at that. It's just their comp is going to be their comp is going to be a fun one to see on stream. Um, but I'm curious to see how they handle inkling technology at Purdue. I tap the only sponsored college team that's going to be playing in this event. Uh, Triton Splatoon was going to play, but they backed out due to uh, COVID reasons. So that leaves the door open for ITAP to uh, kind of take a spot here. I'm, I'm genuinely interested in this Kingmaker ITAP game. If ITAP pays attention to what kind of comp is going to be thrown at them in the game plan a little bit, I feel like they can come up with a strategy to kind of deal with this uh, this this uh, unique this that Kingmaker is going to be busting out here. So this should be a good one to, be, uh, to keep an eye on as well. If this one ends up on stream, I would definitely watch it. Um, cause these are two very good teams, uh, in their own right, um, going up against each other here. Carnage gaming. Uh, the roster that carnage gaming is going to bring in out here is going to be Rissa shiny boy and O U Z Y. I believe that is pronounced Aussie. Uh, I could be totally wrong with that. I know I screwed that up when I was commentating them in a I believe testing rounds so the last time I commentated them, but no red shell. However, in place of Red Shell, they brought in Power, <laughs> like one of the best anchor players we have in North America, formerly of Slaughterhouse. Uh, really strong charger. So how do you replace a Slayer with an anchor? Uh, I don't know, but Carnage Gaming has a really strong roster right here. They would have been a top team in, with the teams that sign up here. They would have been a top 10 team for sure. But adding Power... Uh, might put them in another uh, another category altogether. Definitely look for Carnage Gaming to make top eight. They will be playing on Sunday. That's a guarantee. Crayons. Who are these guys? This is made of Canard, Hori, Kojo, and Odds. Now, Kojo won splits, uh, Squid Junction number nine, beating Good Morning three to one. So Crayons might be a team here that's in the second spot that has the potential to steal a spot in a, uh, in on Sunday. Um, I, maybe, maybe still a spot in Sunday. This is a really strong group right here. Honestly, grin agenda. Uh, this is the only team I don't know anything about. The players on this team are cosmic with a Z axle fire Bremen and Caleb slash Agent C 101. I, I, I honestly do not know anything about those guys. I tried to look up some Twitter. Uh, there was one person with Cosmic that had a profile pic of a Donkey Kong, um, but it wasn't with the Z. So I, I don't know anything about these players specifically. But I do know something about the homies. And I feel like the homies are criminally underrated here. The homies have Fern from Luau 
and Pork Smork, formerly of Ink Sigma. So really strong players. Um, this is not a bronze uh, bracket roster team right here. The homies are going to be, if the homies make bronze bracket, I think they're going to win it for sure. Cause they got a really strong roster here. I, uh, and honestly, this, this is, if there is a group of death, it's probably this right here. I'm not saying the homies can threaten to beat crayons, but the homies are probably the best bronze metal team we have here. Um, compared with a lot of these other teams, this one's going to be really tight. If there's going to be any bracket where you see kind of a couple of upsets, I think it's D3. Moving on to E1. Arctic Moon. This is the other team I talked about. Climb is one of those teams that can play spoiler. The other one is Arctic Moon. Arctic Moon coming off of their snapshot uh, tournament win of Dapple Productions from this past weekend. So they're going to be coming into this low ink. This low ink. This riptide hot and ready to go and ready to play strong. Um, I don't know. Again, I don't know. Can they beat F2 Winter Starburst? I don't think so. But who else? If, if it's not them, then who else? Honestly. Uh, definitely a top four or top three team. Fiction. Hey, Fiction is back. How about this? And it's the actual same roster that we're kind of used to seeing from Fiction. Uh, Nick, Smash, Chino, and Payne. Uh, graduate from SAC, I want to say season one because I feel like season two is a little bit too recent. I could be wrong about that. But Fiction, uh, a solid Div 2 team back when they were playing together. Good to see them back here in action. Um, and they got their work cut out for them in this group. They uh, bug man in the Fry Force. <laughs> what? Um has Hamrum, Sombra, Mothman, and Dan the Man. Uh, should be a fun pickup. Dan the Man being the more play, uh, the player that I'm more kind of familiar with. I, I'm familiar with Sombra as well. I know they played, uh, I, I believe they played Brella at one point, which is interesting because Brella works out completely different at lands than it does online. Brella actually works. You know how every Brella user ever has always said, oh, I'm behind my shield, how oh, he killed me. That can't happen at a land, or at least it's, the best possible environment for Abrella to work. So uh, Bugman and the Fry Force looks like a strong pickup team. I don't know how much they've been practicing together, though. Judgers. This is the team that I think most people uh, have the most question marks. I, I think this is the most unknown team we have in this tournament. Uh, GP underscore Paul, Lou Money, Mitt 86, and Foreside. I, I don't think anybody really knows who these guys are. I could be wrong. Um but uh, I guess, I don't know, we'll get to mean every now and then. There was a team at Genesis 7 that used like quad blah bobbler and they didn't win a game or anything like that. Um, I hope they had fun though. Um, maybe Sir Skit knows who Paul is. Big fan of it. So there you go. Maybe that bumps them up a little bit. E2, Madhouse. Now let's get this out of the way right now. No, this is not the players that tried to pull the Scooby-Doo villain trick on the Nintendo Turf War tournament. The, the players playing in, in this one are Zidge, Whoop, Taco, and Umbre. So strong players in their own right. Um, not the, Don't associate this this team that's going to Riptide as the team that cheated with that. That's an unfair association to make because uh, those players were not involved in that thing. Top 8 contender, yes. Uh, I don't know if they're actually going to make top eight though, because you look at there's 10 teams here that are seated at the top and only two teams are going to get left out. I think Madhouse is one of the teams that is on the bubble to make it into the top eight as this for as uh, some of these other teams that are uh, kind of guaranteed to get in there. Chalk in the supersonic bird bath. What? What, what do I have written about? about these guys I already forgot who they are oh 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 i know who these guys are it's crim Dr uh joke drez and marsh and also dura is on this roster but i don't think we know if dura is going to be able to make it or not plus uh i've heard that dura was just going to be a sub anyways in, in case something were to happen with those other players but this is a strong roster and honestly i think chalk has the best chance of upsetting their number one seed team. Actually, I wouldn't say that, but th if there's two teams that have a chance at upsetting the number one seed in their group, I think Chalk has the opportunity to do so. This is a strong pickup team. Now, Madhouse being the actual team after actual synergy should get the advantage over this, but the roster that Chalk is bringing here is definitely strong enough to, uh, to contend 
with the number one seed in their group. Under current, the another pickup team with uh, second S E C A N T Super Mario ninety two Knox from Illumini, formerly Ink Eye, and Stitch. Uh, I know Stitch has a ton of experience playing in these kind of land environments, which does play a little bit of a factor. Actually, playing having experience playing at lands versus playing at uh, like all these online tournaments. It, it is a completely different setting. It, it's a little bit of a different butterfly that's in your chest. So uh, Stitch being on undercurrent, having a lot of experience with that could be a little bit of a factor um, for this team going forward because they're going to have a tough, and I mean a really tough matchup here against Nice Hats, who is also one of these like suspiciously underrated teams. Um not saying the seeding council did anything wrong or like, oh, the seeding should have been different for teams like this. But some of these teams, uh, some of these teams are really strong in the bronze and the, like this, this four number four spot over others. And nice hat is definitely one of these more stronger teams. Um, Citrus, Achilles, Lord Esper and Dre. Um, yeah. So I think this one, this whole group as a whole I think Nice Hat can beat Undercurrent. I think Chalk can beat Madhouse. I think uh, I think this whole group could be topsy turvy, kind of like D uh, D three over here. So, definitely a group you want to keep an eye on. E three Azure, very old team. The Mad Scientists themselves always a fun time commentating anything Azure does because they're always pulling out some sort of wacky comp with with wacky builds. Uh, I, I think the last time I commentated them, Mud Cup was using, uh, I can't remember. He was using a Azure, um, a suction bomb weapon. I want to say K shot, maybe an N zap or something like that, but had like so much sub power up that they were chucking the, that suction bomb, like halfway across the map. Like, like it's, it's crazy what these guys think of and kind of come away with. The problem is though, when you face a team against the meta, um, it either works out really well or it doesn't. If there's a team that is upset prone in the top 10 of these seedings right here, I think it's Azure. Um, in case in point, they play a strong team right off the bat in CDs. <laughs> I think these guys can upset Azure. Brock, Latios, Pulp, and Nishi. Uh, Brock and Latios coming in with a ton of of land experience themselves. Uh, I know Latios has been playing in SOSs and I feel like Brock has been playing in everything. Uh, most recently at Genesis uh, with the old Carnage gaming team. So this roster is strong and I honestly feel like they can beat Azure. Um, I'm not going to sit here and call it right now, but I feel like they have a definite shot. I, it's Chalk and a CDs are the best two teams uh, have an opportunity to kind of steal a spot from the teams that's above them. Uh, we are skipping this team right here. Uh, this team has a player on it that is currently banned by Splat Safety. It is a total embarrassment from Ingabe TV that this team is uh, is playing in this. Uh, so I'm not going to give any credit to this team whatsoever. They should not be here. Illumini. Actual team. And it's actually exciting to see these guys here. This is basically the rebranded ink eye that's been known as Illumini going forward. And it's good to see these guys playing together. Uh, most recently, they've been making alpha brackets in low ink. They've been consistently improving since January up till now. Um, so Illumini, it's going to be really fun to see. These guys. It's going to be cool to meet these guys as well. Um Maybe we can hook them up with some IPL swag since they've been so consistent playing in IPL tournaments. Now, uh, I can't really fix this because we're going to be talking about a group that's blocked here by my chat and overlay. Oops. But uh, it's just three teams and you don't care who they are. But <clears throat> first team in here is a three-team group. First team is Starburst. Uh-oh, we're finally talking about a team who can win this tournament. There's only two. Starburst is the number one seed in this tournament. If they're not, they should be. Um, we're going to see them in grand finals. The question is, what side of grand finals are they going to be in? Are they going to be in from the winner's side? Or are they going to be in from the loser's side? Starburst, um, yeah, I, I mean, we they are a team we're expecting to do. <laughs> I mean, who can beat them? 
I, I not FT win. Why are they the number one seed over not FT win? Well, because it's not FT win, as they're saying. They they got like a they don't have the full roster that they usually had. We'll talk about that when we get to them. But the I mean, this is this is probably the first time they'll actually go up against a team that can challenge them to some extent. Um, and you don't know, you know, land environment, being on a stage, uh, in front of, with tons of people watching live and ton of people right in front of you, watching you, cheering you on that, that can add a little bit of a different atmosphere and you don't really know what can happen with that. But Starburst on paper should be the number one seed in this tournament over not FT win. The other team in this group is some team called Thimbo IHOP. Um, and even though Nintendo released a cease and desist um, to this event for Project Plus, IHOP has not released a, a cease and desist to Thimbo IHOP yet. So obviously that means ipso facto they are supporting Thimbo IHOP. So can so it's awesome going to be seeing these guys here. Uh, Div 4 team banned from low ink because they're way too good. Boing, Tux, Damp Waffle, and AJ. So everybody but Echo um, basically is going to be a part of this one. However, they play a tough team outside of Starburst. They got to play against Dofu, Daffer Nap, uh, Daff, basically Daff, uh, Delta Jordan, Tofu, formerly of Destiny Troops, is retired, but is still active in the scene. And Kato. Now, I know who Kato is, and most of you probably don't. Kato comes from Ohio. Uh, I think last played with the uh, uh, Los Inklings, um, but has, uh, hasn't been playing much competitive lately. But is still a really strong slayer in their own right, and is going to be a tough player for a lot of these uh, Thimble IHOP players to kind of deal with. If they, uh, because they might not know who that player is, except for all of them listening in chat right now. Um, this will be a tough matchup. Thimble, IHOP, and Dofu. This is going to be one another one of those really close matchups um, where it, I, I think, I think the seeding was kind of like a, like a snake, like the, uh, the number one seed of like the top 10 teams will play like the bottom seed of the, of the next 10 teams or something like that. I feel like Thimble, I hop and Dofu were probably like right next to each other. Um, and that should be a really good matchup, but that one's on stream. You'll want to keep an eye on that for sure. Um, rooting for Tofu who plays for Dofu, but, uh, Hey, we love some Thimble, I hop over here. G2. Not FT win. So why are they not FT win? It's still pretty close to FT win. Well, it's, they got Keo, uh, they got 2D and they got Biscuit. Um, so no Shaq and no Bursty. Um, I think Bursty wasn't allowed to go and Shaq. I, I don't know what our, I, I don't know what our border situation with Canada is like. I don't think Shaq is allowed to enter our country or Canada is not letting them. Like, I, I don't know whose fault is that, but, uh, Regardless, Shaq will not be there, but Keo, 2D, and Biscuit will be. So who's their sub? It's Leafy. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not too familiar, but I believe Leafy is a Nautilus player. So are we going to see like that that double Nautilus that we saw back when like Bagel and Biscuit were playing against each other? Are we going to see that kind of aggression? It worked for them. It worked for them and not anybody else because Bagel is the inventor of the Nautilus. And Biscuit is like the champion. It's kind of like Seto Kaiba and Maximilian Pegasus of the Nautilus. So it worked out for them. Does that mean that it's going to work out for Biscuit and Leafy? I don't know. But still, the roster altogether, Arctic Moon, maybe. Climb, maybe. But should still be seen as the favorite. But since it's not the true FT win, and Roundy says Splash, so that throws that weird theory out the window. Um Still, because it's not FT win, even though we associate FT win with dominance, FT win's been on these, been on stages bigger than what they will see here at Riptide and have been successful on it. That should be a factor that plays into all of this. But uh, because Starburst is close, is well, more recently relevant, they get the nod over not FT win in this situation. The teams they have to play in their group. First off, the Cornfield Yakuza. Hey, this is my team. Yo, let's go. Uh, an all-Indiana team. They, uh, there are two all-Indiana teams in this one. ITAP and the Cornfield Yakuza. This one is made up of myself, 
Magic 8 Ball, Ally, and Roundy of the Crustacean Crusaders. So a uh, very strong team. We've been practicing together a lot, hoping to make top 16. Maybe go even further than that. Um, if we beat not FT win, I will run out of the stadium, uh, run out of the venue, and go straight home because there, there's no... There's nothing else I could accomplish in my life that's going to be better than that. Other than maybe having a kid. I don't know. I've never had that before, so I don't know how that feels. The Krusty Crews, the other and final team in this group. Uh, a team Cornfield Yaku uh, Yakuza should definitely not overlook a Div 4 team. Low Ink top four back in February, back when Low Ink led in Div 4 teams. Low Ink was a tougher tournament back in February than it is right now, and Krusty Crew made top four in that one. I want to see, more so than them playing us, I want to see the Krusty Crew play Thimbo IHOP at some point in this tournament because those two teams had a little bit of a rivalry in Low Ink. They kept playing each other again and again, and uh, Thimbo IHOP kept getting the better of them in Swiss. So it'll be fun to see those two teams play against each other if they do, but for that to happen... Um, you're going to have to see a little bit of upsets in a few brackets so where they end up in the same bracket, but still... Uh, good to see the Krusty Crew here. Uh, I haven't seen them personally in a while. I don't know if they like disbanded or went on a hiatus or whatever. Um, but when I initially announced Riptide, I missed saying these guys signed up and they let me know about it. I'm not missing you guys now. In fact, I get to play against you. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see. You can get what you want or be careful what you wish for, I guess. Prophecy is in this tournament. What have they been doing recently? I don't know. Yes, they won. Uh, this was the team that won High Inc. But that was 10 months ago. What have they been doing since then? I don't know. Uh, I'm sure they've been practicing and getting ready to play in this tournament. And, and uh, But when you talk about bubble teams, priority, that's right. I got Prophecy and Priority mixed up. But when you talk about bubble teams, I feel like Prophecy is one of those bubble top eight teams. Going into this one. Uh, base four. Flapper. Uh, Flabber. Ollie. Cuber. And Cosmos. A strong pickup team of experienced competitive players. Uh, that's going to be in this base four one. Definitely a team that should be in the redemption bracket. I don't know how much they've been playing together. But regardless, they've been playing... Uh, as a, this might be like one of those pickup teams that's playing consistently in other tournaments that I just never catch. Um, but I would assume these teams have these players have somewhat experience playing with each other because they are constantly playing in a ton of tournaments uh, for the past couple of years. Splat Force Two Electric Boogaloo. Splat Force is back, kind of. It, it, two players, Avril and Todd, are here, and they got um, they got Lichen, uh, the brush player from Lost Inklings. And uh, Kyo Oya, K Y O U Y A. Uh, so basically, half of Splat Force, and it's good to see them back. I know Avril's been active in the competitive scene. Um, I don't know what Todd's been up to. I saw Todd join like Dale Sushi, but I haven't seen Dale Sushi or Todd do anything uh, since then. But still, good to see these guys actually in person. Kiyoya, Kiyoya says Damp Waffle in chat. Good night. The players for good night. No, this is not good morning. It's good night. Uh, Jimmy, Nido, X-Ray, and Slug. Another upset-minded team. Uh, Splat Force 2 and good night should be a really good matchup. Uh, I feel like this is another one of those. They were probably seated really close to each other. Um, good night, probably underrated. Uh, Jimmy from Ink Sync. Slug's a really good player as well. Um, that I don't know what team they've been on recently, but they a strong team in their own right. Good night, Splat Force number two, <laughs> Electric Boogaloo, a team you should keep an eye on. Last group here for Apple. If you're not familiar with this team, who's for Apple? Why are they in a top 10 team here? Uh, well, they got two players that are in plus one. Kite and Will, W I L, are in plus one this month. So. Yeah, some really strong players in there. The other two players, actually, they got three more players. So they got five players on their roster. They got four Apple, not the team, the name of the player, uh, Seth and Frank. Uh, I'm not familiar with those teams, but when you have some plus one talent, basically the best of the West, the best of the best that the West has to offer, uh, should be considered a strong team to win this tournament. Or not to win this tournament, but to make top eight. 
License to Krill making an appearance here. Yes, they disbanded, but we saw them play in Snapshot last weekend. That was probably to build up uh, a little bit of uh, experience going into what is going to be their final tournament. They announced that they, when they disbanded that they were going to play in Riptide. Anyways, uh, Bronze, Greg Uru, which I'm sure I'm pronouncing incorrectly, uh, Mr. LGX, and Turtle. Uh, top 16 lock. For sure. Um, these guys should be in redemption bracket because they probably won't beat for Apple, but they should do good enough in redemption bracket to make top 16. Shoe shakes by the seashore. Oh my gosh, Carrot. I hate you for having this name. I hope <laughs> I hope I don't end up commentating any of this mess. Uh, but Shoe is made up of Falco Flyer, the guy who runs the Friday night frenzy tournament that we talked about earlier. Carrot, the uh, official producer of the podcast. K.O., who has last played on Symphony, the Charger player. And Dino of uh, Psychedelic Air Launchers. Uh, so a fun pickup of almost all Ohio players. They had to take one of our Indiana players, uh, Dino, from Purdue to make uh, to make this uh, team work here. But should be a fun team to see play nonetheless. And especially fun considering they got to play Sea Slime Nation, my wife's team who also has Shmeeb from Rising Hope, Pac, and uh, Jay King. Um, so this is another one of those matchups where you could put it on stream because you know it's going to be close, but if you will commentate it, you know the commentators are just going to... just It's so many S's and so much nonsense. C, I mean, how do you even... You could say shoe and slot and sea slime or shoe and, and C, but like... This is going to be a really confusing one for commentators to go with, and it's probably going to be on stream because you know it's going to be a close matchup. Ugh. Okay, there you go. That was Riptide, all 38 teams. How is Riptide going to actually work? There is a pandemic floating around. There is a lot of health and safety concerns. There is a, a banned tournament organizer. That is also playing. So there's a lot of factors that are going into this tournament. My hope is that it is going to be a fantastic one. Again, this may be the last land we see for a long time. So hopefully everything goes well, goes smoothly, and uh, we'll recap all of it on the next episode of the podcast. Your goal is to be here alive and healthy and well for the next episode of the podcast as well. And if you'd like to be involved in the podcast in any way, if you... Uh, if you want to be here live in person to watch me get my next haircut, feel free to reach out to me at my socials below Twitter at Mr. Underscore pop gun, discord pop gun, hashtag 5882 YouTube at pop gun, uh, at 25 pop gun, Twitch at pop gun, 25 anchor dot FM backslash pop gun. Who is playing Splatoon right now that I haven't streamed or rated in a while uh, a lot of people streaming Splatoon. This dude, uh, this person's doing Salmon Run. You guys need to watch some Salmon Run. We'll read that. Thank you for watching. Make sure you get vaccinated if you haven't already. Make sure you wear your mask if you're not doing that currently. Um, and we'll see you all next week. I'm excited for this weekend. Enjoy the rest of your Labor Day. Ugh. <laughs>